2010 analyst Dr. Nicholas Erberol, otherwise affectionately known as Dr. Nick, joins me every week in studio to give his opinion on the various 2010 articles that have been making it to the press. Dr. Nick, always a pleasure chatting to you. And Thanks there have been some pretty interesting uh, uh, stories that have uh, come through the press this past week. Uh, let's start with this one, red card for 2010 agency over rooms deal. When you read the article, you think, how can Match behave this way? But there is always two sides to a story, aren't there? Definitely, Peter. And what you, I think what we need to appreciate here is that Match over the years, many, many years, has built up uh, a, a huge database of soccer fans who log onto their website to book for soccer World Cups. Now, obviously, they would expect a certain commission for that. They do all the marketing, and they make sure that prices are kept within a certain bracket to make it affordable for international visitors. All right, well, let's chat about, uh, for those that haven't read the article, uh, BNBs are complaining that uh, Match is, is forcing them to devote 80% of their rooms uh, during the tournament to Match and that uh, match are often charging uh, a certain fee plus another 30% sometimes. So that this poor guy perhaps is feeling a little bit too controlled and too constricted by the way match operates. Well, that's a complaint. And mm. now several B&Bs and guest houses have threatened to boycott match and to go on their own marketing drive, which obviously they're welcome to do. But you need to understand that Obviously, Match, as the appointed FIFA partner, needs to be able to guarantee visitors mm -hmm. who want to book about a year in advance. They need to be in a position to guarantee occupancy for any visitor from, from overseas. And to do that, they obviously require certain guarantees. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they are strict, but I think in my view, um, they have to be strict in order to guarantee the experience to the visitor. Mm -hmm. And I suppose half a loaf is always better than none, hey? Exactly. There's another, another article here. We've got uh, Alex Ferguson talking about uh, 2010 and how that will give uh, uh, South Africa a kick start. And uh, he first brought Man United out here 16 years ago. I remember that because that was Roy Keane's first ever match for Manchester United at his new club. Absolutely. Ryan mm. Giggs was there. <laughs> yes. And if you look at Alex Ferguson, his 20-year-plus yeah. Uh, history, it is amazing what kind of brand he's built up mm -hmm. through Manchester United. And his statements are very positive about 2010. He says 2010 offers the country and the continent the opportunity to showcase the best to the world. Um, and what he's seen during this one week, he called it a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. um, and he was especially thrilled by the enthusiasm of the local mm -hmm. supporters. And he also spoke a little bit about uh, how Bafana Bafana, the South African uh, national football team, really does need now to gain yeah. some momentum. Yeah. And I suppose it's important, isn't it, for the home nation to at well, least it's progress. It's absolutely critical. It's a determining factor between hosting a good World Cup and a great World Cup. Because mm -hmm. you need that national energy. You need to galvanize the nation. And there's no better way to galvanize than having a winning team. Mm. And then finally, uh, your article that you wrote, Better World for Children, One Soccer Ball at a Time. And you start with a, uh, quite a sad story that I remember, and that's uh, the slaying of uh, uh, Escobar back in 1994. Uh, t take us back and tell us what this story uh, uh, is talking about. Well, it was basically the first round of the 1994 World Cup hosted in the US and Colombia lost to the US, and the crucial goal was due to a fault, critical mistake made by that player, Andres Escobar, who was a number two player in Colombia at that stage. Mm. And when he got back, a few weeks after, he got into an argument over the goal at the petrol station and was shot this, dead. And it was then that certain individuals started a movement in Colombia called Street Football World which has now spread across the globe and uses football as an instrument for peace building and education. And how do they do that? Well, basically what they did, they assembled teams, they took these gangs that were fighting each other, they assembled teams where they mixed boys and girls, they did not have a referee, so the teams had to negotiate whenever there was a foul, and they basically used social development and integration through football, which worked fantastically in Colombia. 
Uh, this sounds like a fantastic uh, 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 thing to, uh, you know, it's a feel-good thing, isn't it? And it, and it really Absolutely. does make a difference, the social fabric of society. In fact, in fact, in 2010, for the first uh, time ever, at a World Cup tournament, street football will be a part, and 32 teams from all over the globe will come together to Alexandra to host the what's called the Football for Hope Festival. Well, sounds exciting. Dr. Nick, thank you once again uh, for bringing all of this uh, press to our attention. Thank you.